a recent series of videos I repaired this Olympia ESW100 KSR electronic typewriter and in that series of videos I went through a repair of the power supply and I mentioned that the um, power supply is a bit unusual in this because it uses a ferroresonant transformer. If you're not familiar with ferroresonant transformers I posted a series on them some time ago so you might want to go and have a look at that. They are quite interesting devices. But one question that came up as a result of this repair was um, how does the ferroresonant transformer behave in terms of its power factor? So what we'll do in this video is we'll find out and uh, we'll see one of the main disadvantages in using ferroresonant transformers. So I'll just move the camera so you can see the test setup and uh, we'll see what happens. I have the Olympia connected through my Voltec PM100 power analyzer. It's connected to our auto transformer so I can vary the input voltage and we have the Olympia here on the left. You can just see the corner of it. Uh, hopefully you can see the display on the Voltec. I can't really tell through the viewfinder how clear the display is but I'll keep you informed as to what it's reading anyway. And uh, I've got the incoming mains set to 242 volts the Olympia is specified at 240 volts but if you watch the videos when I repaired this you would have seen that uh, anything over about 120 volts on the mains input would give us the correct um, output uh, supply so we'd get the correct voltages coming out of the supply uh, and in fact the typewriter will work uh, with the mains voltage set down to 120 volts so it's, it's a bit like a, a switch mode supply in that sense, that it will uh, allow operation over quite a wide range. The ferroresonant transformer provides a very good form of kind of automatic voltage uh, regulation. Um, but it does have a, a, a drawback, a flaw, when it comes to uh, varying mains voltages. So if you did watch the series on the ferroresonant transformers, you'll know that they work by having a uh, a secondary part of the transformer core that is a resonant circuit, hence the name. And uh, the problem with that is it resonates at a very particular and fairly narrow um, range of uh, voltages and currents. And if you stray outside of that then it obviously starts doing things it's not really designed to do. Now this particular setup is designed to run at uh, 50 Hertz at 240 volts. The same supply will run at 60 hertz at 120 volts. And that's kind of one of the key things with a ferroresonant transformer is because it has a tuned circuit then it's going to uh, vary depending on the mains frequency as well as the voltage. Now I can't modify the mains frequency here but we can change the voltage to see what happens. So what I'm going to do is switch the typewriter on So it is now running, it's reset itself and we'll switch the PM100 to power factor and we're getting a power factor of 0.969 which is extremely good and uh, we'll see that real and apparent power are almost the same. So we're getting uh, 37.56 watts and 38.79 VA so almost identical readings which is what we'd expect with such a high power factor. Uh, and that is obviously very good for the incoming supply. It means that the peak power we are trying to draw through the supply is very close to the power we actually want the machine to absorb. So it's not wasting um, energy by pulling huge spikes and it's not putting undue demands on the supply. Uh, however, if we now start to vary the input voltage, um, we'll see what happens to the power factor. So as I say, it's currently 0.969 does take a while for the PM100 to settle whenever I make a change so we need to allow the filtering to settle down before we take a reading so I'll get up to about 250 volts I'll raise the input by about 8 volts it's not a lot on the mains you can see that already the power factor is dropping off so as it settles we're now down to about 0.941 as a power factor still fairly good Oh, still very good but uh, it has dropped quite significantly for such a small change in mains voltage. 
However, if we now start reducing the voltage, we'll go down to 220 volts, for example. We started at around 240, we'll go to 220. Wait for the PM100 to settle. And again, the power factor is now 0.922, so it has dropped off again quite significantly. Uh, but it's still very good, it's still not a problem at all. So over the range we've seen here, it is really good. Uh, but the reason that it's specified at 240 volts rather than, for example, 120 up to 240, even though it would work over that range, is if we continue to drop the voltage, we'll go down to 200. So the buzzing from the transformer has reduced quite a bit. But notice the power factor is now 0 0.836, so it's dropped by well over 0 0.1, and that's uh, quite significant. It means if we look at the power, we're still drawing around 36 watts, 35.73 watts. But if we look at the VA, notice that's now gone up to uh, over 42, so we're drawing quite high peak power, even though our average power has actually gone down. So this is one of the problems with ferroresonant transformers. They're very good at providing regulation, but if you go outside of their fairly narrow window of uh, design, then they start drawing a lot of power. Even though they're still regulating and giving you the correct output, you start getting a lot of problems. If we now go down to 150 volts and let the PM100 settle. We'll switch back to power factor. And we're now down at 0 0.747 power factor, so it has now started to get fairly poor. Uh, the typewriter will still work, so if I press the key, it's still working perfectly and the supply voltages are still within spec. Um, but unfortunately, because the Federal Resonant Transformer is now away from its uh, design uh, sweet spot, it's starting to perform fairly badly. If we look at the power, average power, we're at 33, just under 34 watts. That's not really dropped too much. But now looking at the VA, uh, the peak is now up at uh, nearly 45 watts. So we are now starting to draw significant power spikes from the incoming supply. And if we go all the way down to 120 volts, so as I said, the typewriter will still work at this voltage. So if I try pressing a key, the typewriter is still working fine but our power factor is now down at 0 0.762. Okay, and if we go back and we look at the power drawn, it has of course dropped because the incoming supply is lower and we have some linear um, regulation in there as well, so the, uh, the average uh, power is, uh, is going down. And if we look at the VA, we're now up around uh, 40 VA. So, uh, obviously we're well away from the ideal operational range of the ferroresonant transformer. We'll go back up to 240. You can hear the humming come back from the transformer as the secondary part of it starts to saturate. And we're now back at nearly 0 0.97 power factor. So that is uh, one of the reasons why ferroresonant transformers aren't used that extensively these days. The uh, power factor uh, is quite difficult to control outside of a very narrow range. They give very good results, uh, very good self-regulation. There's nothing really that uh, will give you the same sorts of results uh, in such a simple form without additional components. Um, and also when it's operating within its uh, proper design range of operation uh, you'll notice that um, the power factor is excellent and it's uh, probably as good as anything you're going to see and better way better than most switch mode supplies i will shortly be doing a series on um, the power factor and performance of various uh, linear supplies uh, such as the Rigol or the O1 and uh, also the Ryden supplies and see how they all compare. Um, but for now I just wanted to show um, how the ferroresonant transformer behaved. Um, before I finish this video, just a quick note to anyone that's tried to comment on my videos. I've had quite a few comments coming through asking me why their comments have been deleted. 
And the short answer is I don't really know. It's not me deleting them. I don't usually delete comments. It's YouTube deleting them. If it's any consolation, then at the moment, 100% uh, of my comments are deleted if I comment on somebody else's video. I think that YouTube uh, just don't like my viewpoint on certain things. And it's possible you left a, a comment somewhere that um, YouTube didn't like. And uh, so yeah, I think they blacklist you or something and uh, that seems to be what happens. And it then seems to have no bearing on what's in your particular comment. So if you left a comment and it was deleted, I apologise for that's not me deleting it. I do receive your comments. I get um, uh, an email notification with your comment. So please feel free to comment even if it doesn't appear in the comments on the video. I still see it and I will try and respond to it and uh, in fact this particular uh, comment uh, that someone left was um, deleted from the video. I've got no idea why there was nothing in there that was contentious but uh, I thought I'd respond to this anyway. So thanks for everyone that's uh, left the comment, they are appreciated uh, as are uh, thumbs up but uh, unfortunately I, I have no control over uh, YouTube deleting them, it just seems they're getting uh, they're fairly ridiculous. So apologies to anyone that's left a comment that's been deleted, I have no control over that. Uh, it just seems to be the way things are going with YouTube. In fact I'm currently looking for another platform to you know, post these videos on but so far I have not really found one that offers much of a significant improvement. Anyone out there with any ideas then uh, please try and leave a comment.